Greetings, church. I was happy when they said, let us go up to the house of the Lord. A gracious welcome to you on this third Sunday in Lent as we gather for worship and praise and prayer. A few announcements for you today. Uh, Number one, a big thank you to Sandy and to Tyler and to Jonathan for all the work that they are doing to bring this service to you. We are always grateful for everyone for all their work that they do to make sure that the gospel gets proclaimed in the way that it has been through our online uh, media. Uh, Other announcements that we have, uh, number one, the youth here at Faith Lutheran are selling butter braids again. We have the links on the website. You can go there and purchase those. All that money goes towards helping uh, send our youth to the National Youth Gathering in 2022. Also, Easter lilies, uh, there's a sign-up sheet as well there for that, or you can call Tyler in the office and get that all taken care of. We hope to fill this whole place up on Easter. Uh, Also, Men's Club here at Faith is starting up at 1015 on Tuesday. Mark your calendar and come on out. Maybe we'll serve some lutefisk or something. I don't know. And then uh, just to to remind you, we do have our midweek services on Wednesday evenings uh, this coming Wednesday, we are here again at Faith, so please join us for that at 6.30. That is all we have for announcements for you at this time. Uh, Let us begin now with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello. March is Minnesota Food Share Month, and this is the 40th anniversary. The Social Concerns Committee at Faith has set a goal to raise $4,021 to donate to the Staples and Motley food shelves. We're focusing on funds because local food shelves can stretch the dollars we give by accessing food banks where they can buy more for the money. Of course, our food shelves can always use items that can't be purchased through those food banks, such as spices, condiments, cake mixes, frostings, jello, pudding, household items, and personal hygiene items. Our church will continue to collect items donated and bring them to the food shelves. Thank you for your continued generosity to our local food shelves. Let's make the 40th year the best yet. A reading from Exodus, the 20, 20th chapter. God spoke to all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above you, or that is in earth below, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation for those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make a wrongful use of the words of the Lord, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long and <clears throat> in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not cover your neighbor's male, female, slave, or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of life. Word of God. Psalm 19. The psalm will be prayed responsibly by full verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day it tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives the light to the eyes. Fear the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and keeping them is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous. Let them not give dominion over 
them and then the whole sound and instant of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 25. A reading from Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks de desire wisdom. But we proclaim Jesus crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than the human life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful. Abounding in steadfast love and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O God. Lord. John wrote The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at the tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out their coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told, them those who were, he told those who were selling the doves, Take these out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. It was after church two weeks ago while I was driving home on Highway 210 that I saw this guy in a pickup pull up close behind an older woman in her car and he was honking his horn and he was shaking his finger at her. And I'm almost certain that his intention was to get her attention and let her know that he was disgusted with her driving because as far as he was concerned, she was moving way too slow. Well, after I witnessed that little episode, I thought to myself, I, I really didn't like that guy but it was really no big deal. Sure, the incident raised my blood pressure a little bit, and I'm sure it raised the older woman's blood pressure, but we'll both get over it and we'll move on. Because you see, that's what we do. We allow our pet peeves to get the best of us for a moment or two. Like when you're driving down Highway 10 and a guy speeds by you and then he pulls up in front of you and then he slows down. Or when a guy drives by in a pickup and there's the back end of his pickup has got a whole bunch of garbage and the garbage is blowing out there. And oh, God, you just get upset. Pet peeves, the things that make your bo blood boil a little. But yet they hardly register as blips on the justice scale as there are events that for the most part 
somewhat affect us personally, but not permanently. But there are events and issues that do reach out and wrench our souls, situations or circumstances that reek of unfairness and resonate with injustice. And it's these events that truly push our hot buttons. For when we see them happen, we react almost without thinking. What are some of the things that set you off that turn your hot buttons on? Is it seeing bullying taking place? Is it overhearing cruel gossip or racist jokes? Is it seeing a person beat up on his pet? Often for many of us, if a hot button issue has really been hit, we don't even think about the consequences of our actions. We just go and do something. We step in and stop the bullying, or we walk away from the gossip or the racist jokes, or we shout out a warning at the animal beater. Well, maybe we do that. But actually, on the other hand, we don't do anything there either. Because we also understand that in each of those cases, there might be some possible risk that goes along with them. So instead of putting ourselves in harm's way, we turn to plan B, which is avoiding confrontation by hoping that someone else will step in and disarm the difficulty. We allow the dirty work to fall on somebody else, maybe an agency or institution or some other authority. Instead of jumping into the hot button situation, we ask Siri to connect us with child welfare or the social service system or the EPA or the police or a TIP program so we don't have to really get involved. But could it be that allow that because we allow agencies, institutions, and proper authorities to take care of our big problems, we then pour out our attentions onto the, our pet peeves and sometimes overreact to those minor distractions in our lives? It was a number of summers ago that my family and I were vacationing out, were vacationing out at Yellowstone National Park. And we decided to drive down to Jackson Hole, Wyoming for an afternoon. I just pulled out of a gas station in Jackson Hole and we were sitting at a stoplight behind a young man in a car. Now I had noticed that the man had unintentionally cut in front of a, another man in a pickup, which didn't allow for the pickup driver to get into the turn lane. Well, as we were sitting at the stoplight, this man that was cut, cut off jumped out of his pickup, ran over to the young man in the car, reached in through the car window, grabbed the young man by his shirt, and then started punching the guy in his face. Well, after a short, oh, what's going on here moment, I started to honk my horn, which made the attacker look my way and allowed the young man to drive away. Now, I'm uncertain as to why that particular confrontation took place, other than I'm guessing that I witnessed a terrible case of road rage. But it was after that mess was over, I tried to shake it off as if it was just another driving miscue. But it wasn't, for you see, there was injustice that took place. In that case, I had a hand in stopping that injustice. It was a couple weeks ago on 60 Minutes that Carol and I watched an episode of that show entitled A Decade of Civil War. And it showed pictures of some of the hundreds of thousands of Syrian citizens that had been brutally massacred by the Bashar al-Assad regime over the past 10 years. Men, women, and children murdered by a dictatorial government. Thousands and thousands gassed to death by an army that had tried to eliminate many of its citizenry by way of chemicals. And why? So this unpopular Bashar al-Assad could maintain power and control throughout his country. According to figures shared by the World Bank and the United Nations, since 2011, over 400,000 Syrians have been killed, or as they talked about in the show, murdered. More than 5 million have become refugees. 6 million Syrians are internally displaced and almost 12 million are in dire need of 
humanitarian assistance. The 60 Minutes report shared a, a video footage of some of the atrocities to the Syrian uh, citizenry. And honestly, they were so terrible that I found myself closing my eyes to the numerous pictures of the horrors that had taken place. But here's the thing that I want you to know. I, like so many others, knew that the massacre of the Syrians was taking place long ago. For so often over the past decade, I'd watched this same kind of footage on the news. And I read about the stories in the newspaper. But you know, it's so easy to close your eyes to the injustice and let someone else have to deal with it. You know, I could have written a letter to my elected leaders or I could have put something together to talk about it in church or I could have got up and said something to friends and neighbors. I could have done something. But instead I decided to let someone else deal with the problem. And I did nothing and said nothing. We as a people, a church, have become so well trained in turning over our big stuff to the government agencies, the institutions, the proper authority, to the ELC, National Office, that we rarely say or do anything about the difficulties in life. But if we find out that Burger King forgot to give us our fries with our order, oh boy, the hot button is pushed and somebody has to be accountable. In today's gospel, John tells us that Jesus took an opposite approach. For Jesus was a master at letting the nagging, time-consuming, energy-snapping, minute details of life roll off his back. He didn't allow himself to sweat the small stuff. Rather, he put his focus towards those things that were really important. And that's what we see in today's gospel. It was shortly after his arrival in Jerusalem, after he had entered the city of Jerusalem by way of a donkey through the golden gates where there were robes laying on the road before him and palm branches waving and a multitude of people shouting, Hosanna. It was then, according to John, that Jesus made his way up to the Temple Mount and is confronted with the busy, bustling scenes of the temple courtyard. And it's then and there that Jesus was suddenly struck by the deception and the corruption that was taking place in God's house, all for selfish human purposes. He understood that there was a sickness within the religious system, and it was more than he could take. It lit up his hot button. And because of that, he was so, because he was so disturbed, Jesus became angry, furious. He was angry that the temple had become nothing more than a marketplace, that the money changers had turned the holy calling of serving God into a lucrative profession. And he was furious that the Passover visitors that came to the temple saw the priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees and scribes letting their love of law and tradition take precedence over the love for God by allowing pointless sacrifices that caused the Temple Mount to run red with the innocent blood of dead animals. Duke Theological Seminary Professor E.P. Saunders called Jesus' whip-cracking action a symbolic movement against the Temple. For according to Saunders, Jesus was trying to bring the Divine Presence back into his Father's house, for the temple had become nothing more than a slaughterhouse, a shopping center, a religious boutique. And Jesus understood that he had to clean house in order to once again make room for God. And it was Jesus' actions that made me wonder this past week, do we have the ability to get mad for God's sake? Do we have it within us to look so intently at our church intensely at our church that we are able to see that sometimes it needs to be cleaned up, maybe even cleaned out. Do our faith practices allow the Holy Spirit to breathe life into all who worship? Can we get motivated enough to take God's message from this holy space out into the world where we live and work? 
Can we allow ourselves the ability to hear the message right here in this sanctuary, to get motivated enough to act for our brothers and sisters that are not from here at Faith or in Staples, but live in Syria or Somalia or Myanmar or Ethiopia or Hong Kong or in any other area of the world that is need of our help and our prayers? Do we still have the ability to get whip-cracking mad for God's sake? Do we? Amen. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us humbly beseech God for his mercy upon the church, the world, and one another. Thank you, Father, for your dear Son. Thank you for making him your living temple. Thank you for making him our eternal house of prayer. Cleanse and purify your church. Make it into a house of prayer for all people. Give it pastors, bishops, and leaders who preach, preside, and teach faithfully, and whose lives adorn the gospel with holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the members of these congregations such zeal for your house, so that we may worship you joyfully, care for one another tenderly, and proclaim your word boldly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for fathers and mothers, foster parents, and everyone entrusted with the care and nurture of your little ones. Give them the grace and faith so they may teach their children your commandments and to bring them to your house, there to receive your gracious word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the rulers of the nations to seek your will and give them the strength to do it. Teach us all to live by your commandments. Give wisdom and prudence to our elected leaders and grant us your peace. Lord, in your mercy. You are the strength of all who suffer and the joy of all who are sorrowful. Be present with your merciful care to all whose need is great, especially Sharon Sinna, Leo, Harper, Jerry Pansky, Kendall Lindemann, Betty Loberg, Brendan Splice, Kathy Ray, Scott Brenner, Hazel, Iris Floisted, Deb Olson, Jody Christensen, Judy Bierga, Julie Hausman, Avis Litzner, Frank Williams, Holly Dietzler, Tom Good, Terry Nelson Anderson, Tanya Hendrickson, Renee Buteau. Give them and all who love them grace to trust in Christ Jesus. He alone is their life, health, hope, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we entrust into your merciful care all our departed loved ones. We think of the family of Kathy Ray's Godson. Comfort all who grieve. Keep our feet in the path of your commandments, our hearts firmly fixed on your forgiving love, and our eyes forever focused on the cross of Christ Jesus until you bring us safely into your welcoming embrace and eternal home. For these things and for whatever else is needful, dear Father, we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns one God now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the paschal feast that renewed in the gift of baptism. We may come to the fullness of your grace. The words spoken to us so long ago in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your Spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And go with the blessings of God upon you. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.